It is time for your favorite Android podcast from the crew of blindandroidusers.com. Kick back and enjoy another fine episode from these Google fanboys as they navigate Android from a blindness perspective. And now, here are your hosts. Hello and welcome to episode 21 of the Blind Android Users podcast. I'm Ed Green and this week I'm joined by Warren Carr, Austin Pinto and Yannick Plassiar. On this week's episode, we have our usual announcement section from Austin. We'll then move on to Android Basics, where it's all about notifications and the quick settings panel and how you can manipulate options in both of those. In this week's In Focus section, Warren is going to talk about screen pinning and app pinning, which is a topic that came up on our mailing list just this week. In the App of the Week section, Farhan Ahmed is going to demonstrate the Muslim Pro app, which is very timely in this season of Ramadan. Well, hello, everyone. I hope you're all well. We're recording today on Sunday, the 2nd of May. How are we all? Thank you so much, Edward. I'm doing well. It's a beautiful day. I'm ready to go to church as soon as this thing is done. Uh, Austin and Yannick, how are you guys doing? Yeah, it's a, be- it's a beautiful day here. Very <laughs> nice and warm. It rained a little bit, so the weather is a little better now. Doing good in lockdown. Complete lockdown. How's life in France, Yannick? Uh, same here. Lockdown, although we are near the end of it. Uh, I think it's kind of uh, tonight or tomorrow morning. It depends. Um, and uh, because I'm in uh, Normandy, uh, I'm not so far from England, so lots of rain in here today and uh, for a few days now. Uh, but it's weather very nice and uh, very, very, yeah, very nice. No, that's good. And all well is here in London as well. It's a nice sunny Sunday evening, early evening here. Austin, what have you got for us in our announcement section this week? This week, nothing, no much announcements. But before the before we start, we like the team and listeners would like to wish our host Edward Green a very happy birthday, belated happy birthday. And in the announcement section, we just have one announcement that is we are seeing a lot of people subscribing on portsite.io, that is blindandroidusers.portsite.io. But now if you go to blindandroidusers.com, you can get a heading that says subscribe to the podcast and you can put your email ID there and subscribe. And whenever a new episode is published, you will get notifications. So if you are subscribed to Portside, you can say stay subscribed there. But if not, then you can subscribe. If you want email notifications, then you can subscribe by going to blindandroidusers.com. We would like to inform our listeners that we will be having the third episode of CSR, which is uh, related to this week's basic Android basic topic. So stay tuned for that. We also would like to alert our listeners that a lot of malware is spreading in European countries and Asian countries. There are two different types of malware spreading. One is the flu bot malware. So what happens is uh, you get a message saying that you have missed a delivery package and it wants to download an app. And if you click on that link, then your data and everything is stolen. So that you need to be very careful of. So do not click any links if from even known people. The next thing that I'm going to tell you is going to even doubt the known people. You'll have to call them and ask them, what is going on? The next thing is, at least for now, it is in Asian countries. It is known as WhatsApp Pink. If you use WhatsApp, so you get a n- message from your friend or from someone in their contact book telling you that WhatsApp has launched a new service called WhatsApp Pink. And there is a link to update to this service. This link is not from the official WhatsApp website. You click on the link and download the APK and if it install if you install it it will message all your friends 
to do the same thing and everyone will spread this malware and will keep on spreading and also take your data so you need to disable install of unknown apps on your phone that is it from the announcements let's sing it a little happy birthday shall we boys Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Come on guys. Happy birthday, <laughs> Happy birthday dear Edward. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. you. I was not aware of that. <laughs> Happy birthday Edward. Thank you very much. We, yes, I wasn't <laughs> aware of it either. You know, he kind of kept it like a secret away from <laughs> us, but now he's kind of you know, revealed it. And so we want to wish Edward a happy birthday. Uh, young man, though, very young man. And uh, <laughs> well, not really. I don't remember 40. when I was that age. <laughs> and that's why I was uh, turning 40. Yeah, I don't remember when I was 40. That was many moons ago, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it happy was a birthday, very good Ed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, something which you can you can set up for birthdays, and that's notifications. Sorry, that was a very weak link into into our Android basic section this week. Although you can obviously do that, it it, it is all about uh, notifications, how to control them, how to manipulate them, what to do with them, whether you really want them at all, because every app you ever install will want to send you uh, notifications that might become a little bit overwhelming. So we're going to take you through how to manipulate those, um, how to also uh, manipulate the quick settings panel or the quick panel, which is very much allied to the notification section. Warren, do you want to kick us off and talk a little bit about notifications? Notifications is a very important part of the Android setup process. Of course, after you set up your Android device, then you, you're going to be hearing all these sounds of ping pong pong, you know, playing ping pong somewhere. Um, those noises are coming from the notifications, especially if you have your email, of, which is by default uh, set to send you notifications upon completing. You're going to hear all kinds of sounds, and those things are coming from your notifications. And that notifications or those notifications can be managed. You don't want to hear all that noise. You could change how you hear those noises or if you don't want to hear those noises at all or if you don't want any notifications at all. If you're like me, who doesn't want any notifications and things like that? Uh, most of my apps have no notifications at all. Maybe just a couple like my Telegram because, you know, I want to hear from Edward or from uh, Yannick or from Austin and some of my other friends and things like that, then I have my Telegram notifications on. But besides that, I don't have notifications. I want to check something, I just pull up the app because I don't want all that disruption and things like that. But So today we're going to talk about how we go about managing those things and uh, whether you want them on your lock screen or not. And so First, though, we want to show people how to bring down the notification shade. For sighted people, you just use one finger swipe down from the top of the glass, and that opens up the notification. And for those of us who are blind, anytime a sighted person uses a one finger swipe, for us who are blind, we use two. So, for instance, bringing down the notification center for a blind person would involve using two fingers to pull down the notification shade. So uh, Austin, you want to show them that and then also how to manage whether you want those notifications there showing on your lock screen, for instance. Yeah, so to pull down the notification shade, as Warren said, you use two fingers and move them from top to bottom. Now you have the display brightness and then you have these notifications. WhatsApp and all your conversations. This is on Android 11. And different phones. Sometimes the notification shade may look a little different on different phones. So you have the conversations at first, like WhatsApp, if you get messages using the messages app or email, then that will go there. If you get any other notification like news updates, they will go in the classification called other notification. So that is how it's classified at least on OnePlus Nord. 
so that was that about notification shared now we will see how to show or hide notifications in the lock screen and again this may differ from different phones so we'll open settings settings search setting apps and notifications we'll click on apps and notifications data usage wireless emerge notifications and then click on notifications notifications recently sent telegram gmail 2 minutes ago notifications on lock screen heading and then there is this notification on lock screen heading so you go down lock screen show conversations default and silent so now mine is set to show conversations default and silent so I'll click on that notifications on lock screen check notification check show conversations default and silent in list so this is the option where you will get to see all the notifications on your lock screen hide silent conversations and notifications now if you have made something silent if you have made a notification silent which you will learn in some time then this will hide it on the lock screen don't show any notifications and don't show any notifications on the lock screen notifications on lock i screen. would prefer that this is the most secure way to Media keep output. your notifications but it's depending on personal preference because if somebody gets hold of your phone what they could easily do is just press the power button and they would see all the notifications so it is best to select don't show any notifications on lock screen so that is it for me the other thing about that as well is if you go to the next setting there's something about hiding sensitive notifications on lock screen so if you if you have it to show default and silent notifications you can customize that further and then show sensitive notifications on lock screen or not. So that means that you can enjoy some notifications on lock screen like your sports scores, but not have uh, things like text messages or WhatsApp messages shown on your notification. If you, if you go and play with that second option, your only downside with that is obviously you're trusting your phone to know what is sensitive and what is not. So Austin's right. The fail safe way is to turn off all notifications on lock screen. Uh, remember that, uh, uh, some two factor authentication people are still using text messages. So, you know, if you wanted to be mischievous and you knew your coworker had left their phone on their desk and you could get a, a, a login text sent to their phone that would give you a code you know if they didn't have their notifications on lock screen hidden all you would have to do is go and unlock their phone as Austin said and you could see uh, what that code was so uh, do at least make sure that uh, sensitive notifications are hidden on your lock screen that would be my very strong advice but as Austin says you know turning the whole thing off is uh, is, is a fail safe way to do it. Yannick, do you want to talk about uh, silent notifications and expanding notifications? Yeah, sure, I can do that. Uh, although keep in mind, as Austin said in the, in the introduction, is that every phone or at least every uh, Android branding has its own uh, kind of notification parameters and, and setup. So maybe what we are demonstrating today is not really exact the same way on your phone on your device and that's well i won't say expected but it can happen so uh you may have to um dig around into parameters to see especially where notifications are and how to, to change such such settings now, when the notifications shade is opened, uh, dragging two fingers down on your lock on your home screen, for example, or within any app, um, from top to uh, to to bottom, from the very top of screen to bottom, you will notice um, some notifications with a, a label collapsed attached to it so what does that mean this label say collapsed or expanded means that notifications by default um, are takes uh, a certain space on the screen and if it's collapsed it takes less space uh, than when it is expanded so what does it change for us? Uh, a little, a few things actually, because when you have this collapsed notification, you will have just um, attached to it at the when doing a, a right finger uh, swipe, you will have an expand button, and if you hit that button and you continue sl um, swiping to the right, 
you will see sometimes some action buttons depending on when notifi- on the notification you are on. What I mean by action button, if for example you have a Twitter notification which is collapsed, then you swipe right, you type the you tap on the expand button, and when you type on the expand button and you tap you swipe right again, you'll see some buttons like like or we retweet or reply or something like that. And if you have uh, a Google message, uh, if you are using Google message for uh, receiving and sending text messages, for example, if you swipe right and type the expand button, you will also have some uh, very uh, handy button like mark as read or reply. And a few notes about replying. If you are using a recent uh, Android version, when you type on reply, it will um open a text it would add an, an edit text field in which you can type the reply but it won't launch the application itself it's called in replies by google and you are still in the notification panel and you can just um raise up your keyboard and type your message and when you hit the send button you will still be in the notification uh, shade again so that's uh, sometimes handy sometimes it's it's a little painful to use that um, to use that functionality to be honest um for me for my text messages for example i use i always use the mark as read when i read the message but no reply i don't use uh it that much are you using that uh guys there's a reply command button I happen to use that a lot because I don't want to open the app. Most especially if you have the message, because the message, when you expand it, you're reading the message there, there's no need for me to actually open the messaging app. So what I do is after I do that, I find a reply and I simply tap on that. And like you said, Yannick, it opens up the editing field right there and it pops up my keyboard and I just type my message and hit the send right there. And I am done with it. I could tap on Marcus Red and then that is done with and it's, it's gone. Now, if I'm trying to verify you sign up for something and it sends you a text message, you know, for verification, and when you expand it, there's that copy, you know, there's a copy, the text or the uh, code that was sent to you. And so it's a very handy feature that I really like in Android um, when it comes to things like that. And you just copy that and go to the application. You are not opening the messaging and you simply swipe up with two fingers to close the notification and you're back in the app that required that uh, verification code. And then you tap on the edit field and if you have the auto fill set into place, then what happens is that your keyboard is going to have that code that was copied to the clipboard and it shows then you just tap on that and you're good to go. So I really like the feature. Last note regarding this expand button. Um, keep also in mind that in uh, talkback and uh, commentary screen reader as well, you can always set up a, an action gesture which would open the action menu depending on the element you are on. And on the notification, this action menu may contain, it's not always the case, uh, it depends on how it's implemented, but uh, at least on recent phones, it may contain uh, several actions like a mark a read or a reply or even dismiss uh, notification. It can be in there as well. So that's always uh, that's also a possibility for you to do to have uh, this uh, to to access these notifications uh, action buttons. Always customize sounds for each notification. And I mean by each notification, I mean each notification type. So if, for example, uh, you are receiving, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, a Twitter notification, you may customize sounds for uh, when you are receiving a tweet or when someone likes your tweet or when someone replies to your tweet, for example. And that's very handy because you can, um, another example, if on the message app, you can customize sounds uh, for contacts, for example, saying my contact, my favorite contact as a special uh, bing bang bong. Uh, so I can, I, I know uh, wh- exactly who is sending me a text, mes- a text message, which is somewhat very handy. And um, it's a c- 
kind of no, I won't say a pain, but it's um well, it can take a little time to to be sure to find the correct option and to set up the, the thing correctly. But when it's when it's done, it can be very handy uh, to to filter. I would say notifications uh, based on the on who sends them or on what's in the notification as well. And I, and I yeah. think as well, Yannick, with different sounds, you can also have different notifications from the same app going to silent or not, can't you? So if you have someone whose messages you don't really care about, you can send those to the silent bin and have everyone else's bing, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, so, exactly. You're right. So if you, you know, for example, let's say if I bring down my notifications, for example, so I got this thing from Best Buy. If I don't want this um, notification, I long press on it. If I long press on the Best Buy notification, I could choose. There's some more settings where I could go in there and say, hey, never show any uh, notification from Best Buy. And so by default, it will ring or notify me with those bing bong bong sounds. Or if I tap here, so I have switched that Best Buy notification to the silent mode. And so when I go to, so I tap on apply. So if I close out of here, notification change, silent. You see now my Best Buy notification that was in the uh, Bing Bong Bong area now is now set to my silent notification. So I'm not going to be hearing any sounds from Best Buy yet in the same breath. It is there in my notification because I want to be able to see those Best Buy sales, but I don't want to be bothered by the noises that come from my Best Buy uh, notification. Now, if I decide I want it back, then all I have to do is long press on it again and go choose the default, which means the default for sounds and things like that. Ed? Then I want to show you how to make notifications more timely, if that matters to you, with everyone's uh, desire for greater uh, battery life. Let, let me first go into where Warren and Yannick have been talking about. Um, if, if you don't have a notification to long press on to, to change its priority, you're going to have to go and find out where they are. So I'm in settings. I'm going to go into apps and notifications. I'm going to go into notifications here. So this is where Austin was earlier. Notifications on lock screen. So we can go into the advanced and see what's in here. So here we have different apps that have shown us notifications. If I go into maps, for instance. So maps can send me any notifications it wants to. So these are all things that maps can do send me notifications about so you can go into each app there and do it if an app hasn't sent you a notification for a while you can get to it from within the app so if i go into the huddersfield town app which is my football app um, i can also get to notifications from within here and configure what its apps are, uh, what its notifications are doing and what I want to show you in here, um, sometimes you'll uh, 
not get your notifications in a timely manner because battery life is very important to phone manufacturers and indeed users, which means that if an app is being optimized, i.e. if it's being strangled in order to conserve power, you might not get its notifications until you unlock your lock screen. So that might be several hours after um, whatever the notification was telling you about has happened. Now, that might not matter so much if it's, you know, a Best Buy offer or um, something from Uber Eats. But if you want to keep track of a sports score or a bet because you enjoy a bit of a gamble, then you're probably going to want to try and make it slightly more timely. Um, so the way you would do that is to uh, stop the phone from uh, uh, including your app in battery optimization. It won't always work. It's not absolutely fail safe, but um, it will certainly mean you get notifications more quickly. So I'm in my club's app, Huddersfield Town. I'm going to flick. Mobile data, Wi-Fi, flip, advanced, screen time, battery, open microphone, like store. So he, here's advanced, and in here we're going to find the battery settings. Huddersfield Town, screen time, battery, 0% usage, less full charge. Battery optimization, Huddersfield Town, intelligent control, automatically adjust background power strategy according to app characteristics of your usage, Take the radio button. So that tends to be the default for most of the apps on a OnePlus phone anyway, intelligent optimization. So optimize if you know you don't care what it does. And the way my sports team has performed this season, you might suggest I should turn this on because they haven't had a very good season at all. Uh, perhaps I would have been better off sanity-wise having strangled the app uh, with battery optimization. So don't optimize. If you particularly care about the timeliness of a notification for a given app, I would uh, tell it not to optimize. Obviously, that will have an impact on your battery. So, um, you know, that you'll need to be sensitive to the battery capacity of your phone, your ability to have, you know, reliable power to charge it, access to that power, all the rest of it. But uh, I, I would suggest going in there. And, and as you heard while we were in uh, that, um, apps and notifications, there's either the notifications button uh, within that screen that you can go and play with your notifications, or if you open an app screen for apps and notifications, uh, each app settings screen in there will have its own notifications button where you can configure um, uh, the notifications for that app. Great. It is very important because if one is into wanting to hear those up-to-date information, then of course you want to make sure that you set it to that. And most especially if you're watching a sports game or whatever, you're betting on something, you're bidding on something on eBay or like I do, you know, uh, you want to keep that. So if you got outbidded, then you want to jump in there and uh, quickly do that. So thank you so much. And so we've looked at notifications now, um, but the second half of that uh, shade, if you will, is the is the quick settings, the quick panel. Warren, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, let's quickly talk about the quick settings or quick panel, like I like to call it. And so what is a quick panel or quick settings? It's just that when you pull down your notification down, for example, now above that notification area, you're going to hear things like, yeah, so that's part of the quick panel, but it's showing you just one line of the quick panel. So in order to totally show everything on the quick panel, you have to swipe down again with two fingers. Or alternatively, from the home screen, you could swipe down with three fingers. So like I said earlier, for a sighted person, from the home screen, they swipe down with two fingers, and that opens up the quick panel. And for us, it means another additional finger, which translates to three fingers, and that pulls down the quick panel area. So since I'm already here, I'm going to pull down with two more fingers. Quick settings. And I am in the quick settings. And here I have... Page one of three, collapsed. So I have three pages of uh, the quick panel. So if I swipe from right to left, I go to, to page two. Page three. I swipe from right to left again. I go to page three. Now, we could manage this area just like we manage our notification area. And that will be the edit quick settings area. Edit order of settings button. Order. Quick settings editor. Navigate up button. So edit order of settings. So here, that means what 
I could do here is if something is more important to me, like for instance, by default, my Wi-Fi is set to position one and most Android phones, that is your number one um, position would be the uh, Wi-Fi and then followed by uh, mobile data and then Bluetooth or, you know, something like that. Now, if you, you can always reorder these things, just like you reordered things on your home screen, uh, moving one thing from one um, a column to the other and things like that. So the same idea here. Now, if I want to move nightlight, position nine, grid, 21 rows, three columns. So my nightlight is position nine. So if I want to change this, we have two ways of doing that. However, the second method would be the preferred way if you are blind. So in other words, you could just simply you could simply just um, long press it and move it to position one. And fortunately for us, when we do that with our screen reader, at least for talkback that I know, it doesn't tell you like it says, okay, you're dragging this thing to position two or position one. And so in order to be able to hear that feedback, verbal feedback, you would need to invoke the actions. So go into talkback menu and choose the actions and find the move item. So if I let's auto rotate position six. So let's say I'm auto rotate position six. Actions move tile and list. So I I just invoke my action and it says move tile. Move to six and grid twenty one so rows three I columns. Put my finger. Move to four. Move to two. Move to one. So I want it on position one. Auto rotate position one. So now auto rotate is now moved from my position six to position one. Now, if I want to move it back move to position to six, move to six. Auto rotate, position six. And that's how you manage uh, things on your uh, quick settings. Now, if you want to Screen add something that is not in there, because you have uh, other things here uh, below that, Hold and drag to add tiles. you have focus mode. this focus mode, bedtime, mode. bedtime. live caption. Live captions, screen record, screen record camera, camera record video. Record video. So these are the things that I also found in the quick panel, but they're not among the uh, 12 or 13 that are shown across the three pages. So if you want any of these, then you follow that same steps that I had earlier, and then you move it to the position that you want. And now you have this in active quick setting area now become active if you move it to say position five or position two depending on where you want it to be so that's how you manage that okay. and that would be the management of the quick settings thanks warren and, and just something to say about quick settings and notifications because obviously when you when you do a swipe down with two fingers you have elements of both panels on your screen at once and what i hear some people new to android say is well i i start at the top of the screen and i'm swiping and i'm hearing all this battery wi-fi Bluetooth stuff, and I want to get to my notifications. Why do I have to swipe past all of this? And, and, and the obvious answer to that is that you don't actually. So Android is, you know, as actually iOS is really, um, you, you shouldn't just rely on swiping. You should you should explore by touch. I would say, guys, would you that touching about a third or halfway down the screen will put you straight to notifications, and touching at the top will take you straight into quick settings. Is that about right? That is right, because like I said earlier, you'll still be shown a little bit half of the quick settings. So for instance, if I pull down the notification, if I put my finger in the middle of the phone, I am interacting with the notification area, but there's a little sliver of the quick settings just above that with uh, the first three items or so on the first line of the quick settings. So see, because I put my finger right up near the top, and so it's showing just a little sliver of the uh, uh, quick settings. So if I quickly want to turn on Bluetooth or turn off uh, Wi-Fi, I don't have to pull down the whole quick settings area in order to do that. Now, if I want to see other items within the quick settings area, I must then pull down with two fingers in order to reveal the other items in there and also be able to add to that quick settings or remove from that quick settings. And that's how that is. So we have that in Android. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. 
but but don't feel like you have to swipe past it to get to your notifications. Yeah, just touch, if you if you're a swiper, you'll be going through a lot, and I don't necessarily recommend. I'm not one of those that like to swipe through things. I know a lot of people do, but then it takes you longer time to get to things. But uh, uh, the combination of using both, there are times that you need to swipe, and there are times that you don't need to swipe, and it's just uh, that's the beauty of how to use Android. You use the combination of two, there are, you know, apps that you would need to swipe in order to get to some things and um, at times you need to hear that contextual thing about an area that you are in so you swiping you may skip over that contextual thing and it's not the best way of doing things that's right it's now time for the third episode of CSR screen reader so it's over to Miriam for the demo Commentary screen reader, or the Chinese screen reader, has gotten really popular among blinds and visually impaired recently. And here, on the Blind Android Users Podcast, we will have a series of episodes in which we will talk about how to use the screen reader and how to get the best out of it. Welcome to the third episode of CSR's Basics. So in this episode, we are going to talk all about notifications as well as the general settings. So at first, let us pull up CSR's settings. How can we open CSR settings? Uh, we can open the main menu by swiping down and then right um, in one sw swipe. Or we can also go to settings, accessibility, and then services, and CSR, or G show as you want to call it, and then settings. So I will open the menu. Menu. Program settings. We do have program settings. So this is an update, uh, just to let you know, when you open the settings, if you actually enabled auto update, it would give you a notification or the, a pop-up that there's a new update. So I'll escape that for now. First, we will go to general settings and see what's there. So we do have the configuration wizard that we actually talked about last episode. That if you want to configure CSR all over again. TTS speed. We then have TCS speed, which does have speed of your text to speed engine. Um, it's not that interactive because sometimes the system is kind of dominant when it comes to that. TTS volume. TTS volume, it's for text to speech volume. So here is the usage hints. If you do remember, we actually did ha do that in more details when we were configuring. Um, so this is the usage hints that we actually had explained last episode. Um, it's simply that the screen reader would tell you what to do when you are focused on an item. List range, um, it's gonna tell you it's um, list or not. Notifications from the notifications panel. Checkbox check. So this one is very important. If you didn't select this or check this, it wouldn't read notifications at all. It wouldn't um, when you get any notification. Okay. We actually did explain that last week. This is custom gestures. If you want to actually create custom, um, you know, gestures for swiping, opening menus, anything like that. Custom gesture settings. And there's the settings. We'll explain that um, in another episode in more detail. And this is general settings. So we'll go to notification settings since I know that today in our podcast it's all about notifications. Action settings. Feedback settings. Action settings. Content presentation settings. Notification settings. Notification settings. Navigate up button. Read notifications from the notifications panel. Checkbox check. This is 
the same check box that we actually have seen uh, in the general settings. It's pretty much the same. Pop-up notifications. Pop notifications. As you actually all know, or if you actually don't know as well, um, if you went to any applications notification settings, whether it's Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, whatever it is, you would see a combo box that says if you want this notification when you receive a notification from this certain app, do you want the notification to be as a pop-up so you can open, reply, do anything or not? So it's different. So do you want, here it says, do you want G-Show to read notifications that are in pop-ups or not? Screen readers notifications that's like timer things plus um if there is something you need to configure it's kind of important leave it i definitely would recommend leaving it checked um do not read incoming notifications when speech is on what does that mean if you can actually um, suspend voice feedback, so you can't, you know, if you don't want Disho to speak at all, if you're in a meeting or um, in the night, you know, at night you don't want to speaking. Uh, so if we actually came to that, you can do that through pressing the volume up and volume down keys, and it would say voice feedback has been suspended. Voice feedback has been suspended. If you want to get it back, you can. Do the same. So here it's kind of the opposite. If you turned your voice feedback off, it will read notifications, and if your speech is on, it won't. Read notifications while the screen is locked. Check box check. Uh, so this is the same as talkback. If you want G Show to announce any incoming notifications um, while the screen is off. Notifications only. Check box uncheck. This function is only available for premium users. Uh, if you do remember, and if you are following since the first episode, I talked about the uh, features that are only available in the premium version. This is one of them. So the premium version is actually um, does have this. It does have this feature, which means that when you receive any new notification, the screen readers won't read it completely just give you um a notification i mean a summary of the that you're actually uh receiving source of notification it means that it would tell you new notification from twitter a uh, new notification from gmail um if you uncheck that box it would just tell you notification from no it won't tell you from what it just tell you um message received whatever it will just read the content this one is really important. So blacklist. What does blacklist mean? Blacklist is that the, you have some apps that you don't want CSR to speak um, or to actually say notification prompts when it comes to them. You just want it, the notification to come and you don't want those certain apps to actually uh, CSR to speak when you receive them without, you know disabling the whole thing so here you'd open this one and i do have gmail already so you would actually press create and here you have all the apps that are installed on your phone and also you have an edit box here for search so Android if we, for instance, tell her it's added already. Okay, so if you want to remove that one, Gmail. Gmail. what you would do is Gmail. Gmail. Cancel button. ADD button. Gmail. ADD button. Cancel button. Android service library. G show. Android service library. Delete Android service library. Double tap and hold. Delete Android service library. Cancel button. And okay button. press delete. delete. Okay, so there's the opposite. Back button. List. Which is called notification while list. This one is really important as well. So here it'll prioritize the no the apps that you actually have uh, contained in this list. So no matter what you're reading, no matter if the screen reader is reading something, it'll just prioritize and it'll speak. Um, 
and actually say this, um, you know, announce the notification. Uh, so that's all in this menu about notification settings. And in the following actually episodes, we will talk more about custom gestures, per app gestures, and much, much more. I hope that you liked this episode. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do actually have any questions, do feel free to reach out to me or to the whole podcast at contact us at blindandreadjudges.com. And I hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Now we're going to turn to this week's In Focus section. And Warren is going to demonstrate a topic that came up on our mailing list just very recently, and that is screen pinning and app pinning. Today, I'll be talking about something called screen pinning or app pinning. Both terms can be used interchangeably. Given my tenacity for history, I'd like to go back and take a look at when we got this feature on Android and why. Back in 2014, Google introduced Android version 5.0, also known as Lollipop. With the introduction of Lollipop, Google brought us screen pinning. Now, what is screen pinning? Screen pinning has to do with the activity wherein you decide to pin an app or pin a screen. For example, if you're a parent of a child and you want to give your child your phone to play with either their Mickey Mouse or Dora the Explorer, you want to make sure that you pin that app so that the kid cannot get into any other parts of the phone. For example, they cannot navigate to the home nor activate the notification center. In other words, what they got is what they got. So with that, Now, let's go and look at how you enable screen pinning or app pinning. I will start with a relatively old device that is running Marshmallow. I wish I had one that was running Lollipop, but I don't have one. And so, as a result of that, I'll be using a Moto G third generation that's running on Marshmallow. I will now unlock my phone. Pin unlock. Pin area. I'm going to unlock the phone now. Dot, 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 enter, port, device unlocked, home screen one of one. I have just unlocked that phone. Now, step one, we need to go to the system settings, and you can go to your system settings via one of three methods. You could either... Swipe down with three fingers from the top of the phone and that reveals what I call the quick panel. Or swipe down with two fingers revealing the notification center. Swipe down again with two fingers and that reveals the quick panel. Or you can go to your app store and find the settings app and click on it. Now that I've described how to get to the system settings, we need to now go to the system settings notification shade quick settings i just swiped down with three fingers from the top and i'm going to find near the top right corner something that says settings settings button quick settings settings i am now in system settings In our step two, we want to scroll down and find where it says security. Location. Security. There we are. Security. Security. Now that we are on the screen that says security, what we're looking for here is to scroll toward the bottom and find something called screen pinning. And by default, this will be unchecked. It is not turned on. So we're going to go down to screen pinning and tap on it. Trust agents, screen pinning off. We are told that screen pinning is off. Tap here. Screen pinning. Upon tapping on screen pinning, we're taken to a new window and in this window, we are told what screen pinning does. 
when this setting is turned on, you can use screen pinning to keep the current screen in view until you unpin. To use screen pinning, 1. Make sure screen pinning is turned on. 2. Open the screen you want to pin. 3. Touch overview. 4. Swipe up and then touch the pin icon. Those are the instructions as well as telling us what screen pinning does. So near the top right corner is an off on button or switch I should say that we need to touch on to enable. So I'll find that off button which is now currently in the off position. I'm going to turn it to the on position. Off. I, item one I tapped on it and it's now on even though we're not told it was on. on, on. All right. Now let's go ahead and navigate out of here. Go back to the home screen. Home button. Home screen one of one. I am now on my home screen and I would like to pin an app or pin a screen. I want to find something and pin it. Chrome. So for example, let's go ahead and pin Chrome. So I tab on Chrome. Now in order to be able to pin this Chrome, which is now showing here, by using this application, you agree to Chrome's terms of I will need to long press the overview or recent apps button. And this button is found near the bottom right corner of the phone. I will now find that overview and long press it. Overview button. Long pressed overview button. Overview. Chrome. Now that I have long pressed overview button, I will now scroll up with two fingers until it says Chrome. Chrome. Now that it says Chrome, just above the area where I long pressed on that overview is a little button there that says Pin Screen or something along that line. Google App. Chrome. Screen Pinning. Tap to select. And there above the overview is the screen pinning. I will now tap here. First run experience. I tapped on that and so that screen has been pinned. But besides pinning that window or that screen, I have instructions telling me on how to go about unpinning that screen. And this is what that says. Screen is pinned. This keeps it in view until you unpin. Touch and hold overview to unpin. And so I could either swipe to got it or explore to got it. Got it button. Screen pinned. And I'm told the screen is pinned. If I put my finger down. By using this application, you agree to Chrome's terms of service and privacy notice. And there is our Chrome that I had pinned. If I tap the home key, for example, home button. To unpin this screen, touch and hold overview. I cannot go home. If I try to swipe down with two fingers from the top, nope, nothing happens. If I try to swipe down with three fingers to go to the quick settings, nothing happens. In other words, I cannot get out of this until I have unpinned this screen. And so to unpin that screen, I will need to long press the overview again. Overview button. Long pressed overview button. Screen unpinned. Overview. Chrome. And I Chrome. am told that screen has been unpinned. If I hit the home key, for example, home now. Home screen one of one. There I am back to my home screen. And if I swipe down with two fingers. Notification shade. There's my notification shade. I swipe down. Quick settings. I am back to the quick settings. And in order to turn it off, you go back and repeat the same process that we did and then go turn it off. So in other words, go to system settings, go find security, go find app or uh, screen pinning, tap on it and then uncheck or turn off the toggle, the on off toggle near the top right of the corner. I will now show you how you go about pinning a screen on a Samsung device. I have a Galaxy S8 here and I will unlock that and let's go see how that happens on a Samsung phone and then we'll conclude with unpinning or pinning an app. Home button. Start 
So here I am, I just unlocked the Samsung Galaxy S8 and I will swipe down with three fingers to open up that quick panel. Quick settings. So there's my quick panel and I'm gonna find the open settings. Open settings, button, quick settings, settings. Now, unlike the one we found on the Motorola phone where we went to security, here on the Samsung device, we're gonna go to lock and security. App lock screen and security always on display. Face recognition, fingerprints, iris, 916. Lock screen and security is what we want. We tap here. Lock screen and security. Navigate up button. Now that we are in lock screen and security, we need to scroll all the way to the bottom and find the one that says other. Other security settings. Change other security settings, such as those for security. Other security settings. We tap here. Other security settings. Navigate now up, that we've tapped on other security settings, we're going to find something freedom. called window pinning or windows pinning. Clear credentials. Remove advanced trust agents. Perform selected actions when pin windows off. 16 of 19. Double dash tap to activate. Pin windows off. So we tap on pin windows. Pin windows. Navigate up. Button out of list. On the next Double screen, to this is what we are told. Pin a specific app on your device screen. While the app is pinned, calling, messaging, and other functions may not be available. Access to other apps will be prevented. To pin an app to the screen, colon. All right, and it will give us the same instructions. One, turn on pin windows. Two, open an app. Three, press the recent button. Four, tap pin windows in the lower right corner of the window to keep the app on the screen. So in other words, it's the same steps that we have on the Marshmallow there on the Motorola G3. And so I'm going to go find now the on-off button there or toggle there on the right corner of the phone. Off, switch. Double tap. On, on. We are on. Home button. Now hit line. home. Star prime. Keep notes. Double dash tap to act. Look out. Double dash tap to activate. Double dash tap and hold to look. Messages. Double so I could, for example, let's say we want to do messages. Play Store. Messages. Or Double Play dash Store. Double dash Play Store. Let's try Play Store, shall we? For you. Play Store. Top. Offline games. Comma. Edit. So I am now on the Play Store. I want to pin this Play Store. What I need to find is the overview as described earlier. In Samsung's case, it is called Recents. And I need to find that Recents. Recents button system UI. Long double press. Dash tap to activate. Settings. Recents. Double dash tap to activate. Double dash tap and hold to long press. With recents pressed, now I'm going to scroll up with Play two store. fingers. And it says so Play Store. Store. And just like we did earlier, we're going to find where it says Pin Screen. And this time it's going to be Pin Window. Pin Windows button. Tap. Turn on Pin Windows. This keeps the app new until you unpin it. So that has been pinned. The unpin app. Touch and hold recents button. And that's the instructions that we're told to unpin it. Tab and hold on the recents. And we have either cancel, button, cancel or okay, okay. App pinned. Now we are told that app has been pinned. Now if I hit home. Oh, button, system, the unpin app. Touch and hold recents button. Nothing happens. I try to swipe down. Nothing happens. Now I'll go ahead now and unpin that play app. Recents button. Long press. App unpinned. App unpinned. Move home button. Hit system home. UI. Star Prime. Play Store. And I'm back home. Home. Bus search. Star Prime. I can now notification open change. notification button. and UI. all of that. Star Prime. Now that I've shown you how to pin an app or pin a screen on Samsung, you do the same thing by going through the same steps we went and go ahead and, and check or turn the screen pinning off or Windows pinning off. We now move our attention to our concluding part and this one has to do with pinning an app or screen on Android 10 or later. And I'm doing it on my That's Pixel device. So now I'm going to go ahead and swipe down with three fingers to open the quick panel. Quick settings. Here I am in quick settings and I'm going to find where it says open settings and tap on it. Auto rotate screen switch. This device is connected to Google 5 VPN out of pager. Open settings button. Settings. Search settings. I am now in system settings. The next thing I want to do is find where it says security and tap on it. I scroll up. 
Storage, 78 for privacy, permission, location, on security, play protect, screen lock, place unlock. Tap on security. Security. Now, unlike that one found on Samsung and the Motorola G3, we're going to go all the way to the bottom here and find where it says Advanced. Encryption and credentials, Advanced, Trust Agents, App Pitting, Confirm SIM Deletion. Encryption and credentials, Encrypted. Tap on that. Now, I scroll up again, and what I'm looking for is called App Pinning. So, you see, we've changed the name from screen pinning to app pinning and it is windows pinning in samsung app pinning off app pinning off tab app pinning navigate up button out of list and it's the same instructions telling us what app pinning does or what screen pinning does and this one will tell us how to unpin it App pinning allows you to keep the current app with you until you unpin it. This feature can be used, for example, to let a trusted friend play a specific game. When an app is pinned, the pinned app may open other apps, and personal data may be accessible. If you want to securely share your device with someone, try using a guest user instead. To use app pinning, 1. Turn on app pinning, 2. Open overview, 3. Tap the app icon at the top of the screen, then tap pin and list. Alright, so there we go. Now we're going to tap on the on-off switch near the top right corner of the phone to enable this feature. Off, search, set, open, feedback, off, switch, off. Tap. On. When app is pinned, personal data may be accessible, such as contacts and email content. Pinned app may open other apps only use app pinning with people you trust. Cancel button. So we could either cancel or say OK. OK button. App pinning. On. Switch. On. I OK'd it, and now I just went back to the home screen. Now, in order to pin an app here, here's what is different. What we need to do is bring up the overview. So I'll swipe up and hold, and that opens up my overview or recent apps. Recent apps. Google, Google Assistant, 15 of 16, and list 16 items. Let's see what we find. Showing item Google, Google Assistant, 15 of 16. Awesome. Showing items 14. Those are my oh, apps. 13. Showing items 13 to 15 of 16. We see a bunch Google of Play apps. Store, Play Store. Well, Let's try Google Play Store here again. Now that I'm on Google Play, all I need to do is to invoke Talkback menu and tap on Actions, and then choose Screen Pinning. If you have enabled an action gesture, you could just, at this point, invoke that Actions gesture. And now, because I have assigned an action gesture, I will now invoke that gesture to go find where it says Pin App. Actions. Close. And list. So I'm in the actions, and what I'm looking for here is where it says pin up. At close and list. Actions out of list. Close and list. App info. Split screen. Pin. I tap here. Play store. Image of app or game icon for keep us. App is pinned. This keeps it in view until you unpin. Swipe up and hold to unpin. Personal data may be accessible, such as contacts and email content. Pin app may open other apps. Got it. And so I want to tap on, on got it. Got it. Button. All right, so now you might also like heading. I could look at all that I want on button. the Play Store. One million plus times. Play trailer for Keepus 2 Android Pass. There Rated we go. Great app. Star rating. Five point. Now, if I want to unpin this, all I have to do, since I'm using the native gesture or the system gestures, because I do not have enough buttons at the bottom, like the home, back, and overview, and all of that, in order to unpin it, I'll have to swipe up with two fingers and hold, and that will unpin my screen. So now I'm going to swipe up and hold and unpin the screen. Scanning face. App unpinned. Lock screen. Google there we go. That app swipe has been open. unpinned, and so now I'm back open. on my home screen. And in likewise manner, just as I described earlier, you could go through the same process and go turn off the feature. And that will be how you go about pinning an app or pinning a screen and then unpinning a screen. Thanks very much, Warren. And I know that will have helped out a lot of users that they'll have read the replies, but it's always good to hear it demoed. I certainly find that helpful anyway. It is a good feature, and I like it. Now we have this week's App of the Week section, and it's it's the time of Ramadan. Uh, and so Farhan Ahmed is 
with us to demonstrate an app, Muslim Pro. Well, hello and thank you very much for allowing me to talk about this app. My name is Farhan and today I am talking about an app called Muslim Pro. It's an app uh, for those who follow the religion of Islam. And I must say this is a complete toolkit for those who are living in the western part of the world for those Muslims of course. So this app has a tons of features um, that I really wanted to talk about. Um, for example, this is a complete toolkit like I said. Um, it gives you information about the prayer timings. It has a complete Holy Quran with translation in 43 different languages and with the recitation of course. Um, and it also has information on the mosques, like where they are located and it also has information about where you can find halal food um, and also it has information about different Islamic festivals whenever they arrive. Um, these days uh, they are uh, they are having a uh, you know information on Ramadan. Ramadan is a, a holy month for those Muslims who fast uh, from sunrise to sunset so this is this app all about the features let's dive in and let me show you what this app looks like 138 a.m. okay so this app is divided into three parts there's a top screen and there's a middle and then there's a bottom so on the top it has a banner that has information about um, my city and when you know when would be the next prayer and then uh, you know what date it is and what date it is according to English calendar and according to Islamic calendar for example today selected okay Sunday May 2nd 19 Ramadan 1442 ah there we go okay so it gave you the information about the English calendar and about the Islamic calendar that's on the top and if I move a little below it button 3.43 a.m. Fajr. Yeah. This is the time of the next prayer. And it Tracker. also sorry, it also gives you the information like how much time is left in you know for this. Button. 3.43 a.m. Sunday, May 2nd button. 3.43 a.m. Minus 2 hours, 2 minutes, and 51 seconds. There we go. And and then if I move down below, it has more information, like more components. On some devices, the notifications may not arrive on time when your screen is enabled. We've made button. We've made our privacy policy clearer with button. Okay. Read more. Fasting times for today. Right. Now I am swiping down because there are some ads. Imzak, Fajr. 3.43 a.m. Ifter. 6.47 p.m. So this is the time when you will stop fast uh, eating. And then this is the time. Iftar is when you start eating. When you break your fast. View more. Share. Before you start fasting, Ramadan, do a swab isami gadin na etu minchari rep sponsored. So this is um, the recitation. This is, these are uh, you know the prayers that you have to recite when you fast when you start your fasting. Button inspirate button. Donate more new okay. notekidla. So, so in, inspiration. Savana ka Allahumma Rabbana wa bihamdika Allahumma Magfirli. Glory is to you. Oh Allah, do us while sujud. Savana ka Allah, do us while sujud. So dua. Like I said, it has tons of features. Um, I'll let people explore themselves. <coughs> but just to let you know that it's there okay so if we move down at the bottom of the screen it has a couple of elements a couple of tabs to switch to and the first one is on details on the, percent three fit percent three decom on global the, on the very left it's uh today today selected and then prayers I, prayers quran 14 quran, new notification kibla kibla more new notification more. so kibla is the direction of your you know the direction where you face when you pray so there are two kinds of prayers I want to mention uh, there are prayers uh, which are obligations that Muslims performs uh, perform five times a day and then there are those, pray those prayers like say you want a success in your exams and you just talk to the God and say okay oh, oh, oh God help me in my exams so when I say dua then I'm talking about the prayers uh, of you know the success prayers that I was just, I just talked about okay so we have this 
this layout I, I think we have a basic understanding of the layout let's move to uh, left let's so we are on today right now today selected let's move prayers. to the prayers prayer selected so in prayers uh, what it has is like uh, again on the top of the screen it has the name of my city and then it has information information about the prayers in during the day let's find out Sunday May 2nd 19 Ramadan 1440 Fajr 343 a.m. Okay. I am coming from top to bottom. Okay. Sunrise 5 11 a.m. Dur 11 59 a.m. ASR 339 p.m. Maghrib 6 47 p.m. Aisha 8 14 p.m. So how does it determine that these are the timings? I think it does uh, some kind of calculation like geographical calculation and sun calculation. Uh, the position of the sun and all that. Then it, it decides... Okay, so this is the time for this prayer. This is from the prayer section and then we can go to Quran. Um, I will not go in there because uh, it might actually start playing. Uh, so what it does is like it has a complete Holy Quran, uh, like I said, with translation in 43 different languages. And to my surprise, it has Urdu, which is my language as well. So let's go to more. Let's find out what's in there. This image isn't like more. New notification. Okay, so... Kibla. Go link. Okay, Kibla. This I image isn't labeled. I, I Open the I, more options menu at the top right to get image. I think I have mentioned about Kibla. Uh, so let's go to more. More. New notification. More. New notification selected. So it has like extra features uh, which are probably miscellaneous, but they will still help you nonetheless. Tracker. More. Tracker. Tracker. It's, um, it's you know, when you read something or when you... Um, are doing some religious obligations you can you could probably use a digital version of the tracker inspiration inspiration khatam so khatam is uh in in english i would say it's finish uh, so say for example you've done reading uh, a holy quran in a month you could just uh, click on this one and just okay put one so that later on you can remember how many time have you finished your quran or how many times have you finished uh, such and such recitations? Okay. Inspirate tracker community. Community. Uh, this is where um, you. Hmm. This is where uh, you know you 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 go there and you ask people, Muslim community, for uh, kind of a help or ask them to make dua or prayer for you. Blah blah blah. Right. Halal. Halal. This is where you go and find restaurants that serve halal food um, if you are Jewish then you're probably familiar with kosher food so the concept is kind of the same I think mosques mosques Hatch and Umrah Hatch journey Hatch and Umrah it's a uh, you know one of the pillar of Islam uh, it's a spiritual prayer if you go to the Saudi Arabia you go to Makkah and Medina and you pray there you do all kinds of uh, spiritual acts um, and it, you know um, yeah and this is called Hajj Hajj journey Hajj journey it gives you information about what to do and what to pray and all that during during Hajj premium premium we don't want to go into the calendar right now. messages do us Shahada Zakat Shahada Zakat. Zakat means charity. It gives it gives you information about when you should uh, give charity. Uh, although it's not really important to know when to do that, you could you could do it any time <laughs> of the day. I don't know why they have mentioned it there specifically. Maybe just to just to remind you or just to put you on track or something. Names. Names. Names of God. Mecca. Mecca. So if I click on there, uh, I could listen to the live streamings, uh, live stream coming from the Holy Mosque in Mecca. Tasbih. Tasbih. Um, I don't really know how to describe this thing, but uh, it's uh, so there are like a couple of beetles strung together uh, with, a, with a string. Uh, and it's a digital version of that. What, what happens is like when you are uh, doing a, you know, when you're reciting a prayer or something, 
you could use tasbi or you could use this one to keep track of it and so this is a digital version of it help holidays all right this is uh, about it from the app um, there is one more thing I want to talk about it um, it also gives you the you know option to set notifications about each prayer you could customize all of the notifications you could set it to just ring a bell when the prayer time comes um, or you know give you a traditional you know prayer call just like it happens in the mosque so I would say this is a pretty useful app and it has tons of features if you want to remove ads you can click on the premium one that's on the top uh, let's let me give you where that is tracker more Adam more inspiration uh, if I click on today today premium delayed notifications are you risk premium there we go upgrade to premium all right start free trial rating bar rating 10 of 10 SP tie Lifetime, one time purchase $199.99. This is a, a, a lot of money for a lifetime purchase, but they have other plans as well. Annual, free for first seven days, 24 monthly, free for first seven days, $9.99. Backup Muslim Pro. Okay, so we, yeah, this is what you heard. So um, they're trying to play with our emotions, and they probably would say, okay, so Muslims will probably buy this app for $200. They are willing to spend a lot of that money for religious religious product or for something which is which you know earns from religion uh, but we're, we're very smart I'm not I'm not paying two hundred dollars and I'm, I'm sure not many people are but probably there are some people who have paid or who are paying two hundred dollars for just an app so this is all about the Muslim Pro if you have any questions just let me know or you know get in touch through the crew of Blind Android Podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks, Farhan. And, and that's a great app, obviously, for keeping across uh, prayer times as well as giving you access to um, the, the Quran as well and, and many other helpful resources. Thank you, Ahmed. And uh, that's my buddy Farhan there. It's a wonderful demonstration. And those of you who are Muslims have a tool. Austin, how can folks keep up with us if they want to? So if folks, folks want to keep up with us, they can email us at contact us at blindandroidusers.com. They can visit us on our website that is blindandroidusers.com. They can subscribe to our mailing list and the email address for that is blindandroidusers plus subscribe at groups.io. They can join us on Telegram. The link will be in the show notes and our YouTube channel and also Twitter. So they can join us there. Thanks, Austin. Uh, thanks to all my co-hosts. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. And that has been another episode of the Blind Android Users Podcast. As always, we appreciate hearing from you. You send those email messages to contact us at blindandroidusers.com. For those My Android Journey stories, we encourage you to send those to myandroidjourney at blindandroidusers.com. Until we see you in our next episode, you have a wonderful day.